Hola, I'm Fivers, and into this video we're going to take a look at the latest Gacha mobile gaming news from the past week. Last week was full of news and new updates in different games. We will be talking about the release of Hikan Erothil, the new Genshin Impact update, the new trailer of Harry Potter Magic Awakened, and much more. Since this is the first week I will be doing the weekly news, we will also be covering the closures of Revive Witch and Princess Connect, and some other recent news. So take a seat and welcome to the weekly gacha and mobile games news. Higan Erothil is a 3D real-time combat RPG with a vintage-inspired art style and a magic tech setting. The game was released on March 1, just a few days ago. The game was launched on the Play Store and the App Store, and it doesn't seem like it will have a PC client. It already has plus 500,000 downloads on the Play Store but the general score doesn't seem that good, just 3.1 stars. But honestly, you can't really trust the scores of games these days, so I would recommend you to try it by yourself if you are interested in it. The amount of downloads is actually really good for a game like this, but we will have to wait until the next month to check Sensor Tower to see how it's actually the game doing in terms of money. I couldn't try the game by myself that much, but honestly, I was kinda surprised. I think that I expected less, and the game feels actually good. I can't give my opinion about the late game because I just didn't reach the state of the game, but the story has actually some cut scenes with full voice cover. That's always a plus for me, and I think that nowadays this is almost a must. I think that we, as players, we are already tired of the standard PNG with a text box. So yeah, voice action is really a plus. You can put it in Japanese or English. One thing that I actually don't really understand is that the global release doesn't have a server for Europe. You can just choose North America or Asia. I didn't notice any lag because of that, but it could happen, I guess. In the other side, the quality of life seems really good and the screen flow works really well. I'm actually surprised. They have also put their first event summon, so check it out if you are interested and leave me in the comment section what's your opinion about Higan Erothil so far. Moving on to Genshin Impact, they have teased us with some of the new events coming on the new version 3.6. In this new version, the areas Gavri, Lyabart, and Real of Farakert will be available. We will have two new characters, a 5-star called Baisu and a 4-star called Kabe. We will also have the character event which says for Naida, Nilo, and Ganyu. They are adding three new domains one new 5-star equipment, two new artifacts, and some new story quests. They also have gave us information about the first phase of this update, where we will have two different banners, one with the event-exclusive 5-star character Naida, where she will receive a huge drop rate boost, with the 4-star characters Kuki, Sinobu, Dori, and Leila, and the second banner, where the event-exclusive 5-star Nilo will receive a huge drop rate boost with the same 4-stars as the other banner. They will also introduce some minigames and side quests during this phase 1, to get some extra rewards. Check the full notes if you wanna know every detail of it. And to finish with Genshin Impact, they have also teased us with what it seems like a brand new character called Kirara. So a ton of things coming to the wall of Genshin Impact. This new version will be available on April 12th. Marvel Snap just released a new season, and I can just say that I love the theme. The new season is called Animals Assemble, and as the title says, it goes about all type of animals. They have created some new cards that look awesome. As always, this new season also brings two brand new locations, Pet Mansion and the Sandbar. The season also brings some of my new favorite variants. I really like how they present their new content. In my opinion, Ben Broad is doing an amazing job. Tower of Fantasy just released at the beginning of this month the version 2.4 called Under the Grand Sea, where they have launched their newest character called Lan, together with a brand new area under the sea, a new vehicle to explore this area under the sea, and a new boss for this area. Honestly, this is a perfect moment to come back to Tower of Fantasy to enjoy the exploration and the main story of this new chapter. Tower of Fantasy is also preparing a special gift, a free way to obtain Liz's weapon and her new skin, Azure Heart. This will come with the version 2.5. We just have right now an event called a Springtime Saunter, where we will be able to play some minigames and get some rewards in the event shop. Right now, there is only one of the two game modes unlocked. 
This game mode is like a hide and seek minigame that it can be actually fun. We will also have a new event coming on April 20th. To finish, they have also presented a brand new character called Icarus. I'm not a fan of his design, but I must say that I really like the weapon that he is using. Moving on to Harry Potter Magic Awakened, they have done on March 31 a soft launch on some regions, so if you're lucky to live in any of these countries and you were interested in playing the game, you can already download it and try it by yourself. They have also presented a new trailer and it seems like they are being more active in Twitter these days, so hopefully they release the global version soon. They have created an official Discord, so feel free to join if you want to know the last news about the game. Honkai Star Rail is just around the corner. The release is scheduled for April 26. Well, if someone still don't know what is Honkai Star Rail, it's the new RPG with turn-based combats developed by Hoyoverse, the studio that has created Genshin Impact. So there is a lot of hype around this game. We don't have that many news for now but they have presented a new trailer about the character called Himeko. They have also said in Twitter that they are planning to do a major announcement on April 19. So stay tuned, because we just have to wait two weeks for the release. Guthering Waves, the new game coming from Kuro Games, the same studio as PGR, are preparing a closed beta for April 24. You can still register to participate in this beta until April 14, but there are only some regions able to participate so check the frequently asked questions before register. I actually wanted to participate in this beta because I'm really interested in this new game and I wanted to bring some new content to the channel, but I can't enter due to my region, so in my case I will have to wait. But I'm glad that the game is releasing this close beta that gives me hope that the game could get a global release at the end of this year, or even sooner if everything goes well. Memento Mori will celebrate on April 14 their half anniversary to commemorate 6 months since the game's release, but they are not giving that much information in their social media. I'm actually surprised about how well Memento Mori is doing in terms of money, they are always around the top 10. I didn't play the game that much, I found the game really really pretty, the art is totally stunning, but the gameplay, what do you want me to say, it's an AFK RPG, so the gameplay wasn't exciting for me, but I'm really curious about the game and I would like to know why is it doing so well. Demian Saga will get released on April 13 globally, I honestly don't think that this game will bring anything new to the market, it feels more like an old school idol gacha, but hey, if you would like to give it a try, here it is. Then, just to give you some small announces, Grimlight has released a new update. In this new update we have a brand new hero called Glinda, a water mage. I have covered her on my last video, so go check it out if you are interested. This update also brings a new dice calendar, a rerun of the event of Evil Queen and some small changes. Alchemy Stars has released a new update that brings two new characters, a new event, a new way to upgrade some equipment and some new features. If you are interested in it, I would recommend you to read the patch notes to know every detail about it. PGR has also released a brand new event called Reveries with a Well. This new update brings a brand new character called Pulao, some new skins, a new steam, a new calf and a new boss, plus some other small features, so go check it out. This light is going to release on April 11 a new update. This update has a new event called Dusk and Dawn. We will also have some new characters and some new features. I'm not gonna go in every detail about each feature because I don't want to make the video insanely long for no reason. And now it starts a really sad part of the video. We have some big shutdowns. Revive Witch will shut down on May 7. This game was the reason why I have started creating YouTube videos, and it was my main content since I have started. So it's actually really sad for me to hear about this announcement. But not everything are bad news. They are giving a lot of dolls for free to all the people that still has the game installed. So go check it out if you're interested in it. I will try to make a goodbye video to Revive Witch, because I think that the game really deserves it. And on the other hand, about my videos, don't worry, I will find new games that excite me to cover them. I also enjoy to talk about game news, if you haven't noticed. Princess Connect is also shutting down on April 30. This one was really unexpected. I'm sorry, Borg. I don't know if you were still playing the game by your own, but I know that you have covered it for long. This game was from Crunchyroll, and honestly, they do a horrible job with most of their games. 
but Princess Conaid was actually decent. Sorry to all the people who were still enjoying the game. Knight's Chronicle, an RPG released on June 13 of 2018, will shut down on July 4th. Five years of service for a game like this is actually really good. Exos Heroes will shut down on May 11. Well, I think that every person of this community knew this game and actually liked it a bit just because FG3000. I'm sorry FG, I just can not say that I have enjoyed every video that you have done about this game even after I dropped the game after the honeymoon phase. Keep it up. Honestly, if something was good about Exos Heroes, was the incredible art and the big detail in every animation of its character. It was in another level. But the actual gameplay couldn't trap that many people. Gundam Breaker Mobile will also shut down on June 5. This was a gacha game about Gundam. It was released on AQ6 of 2019. So it was alive for almost 4 years. That's all the news for today. I honestly just talk about the games that I'm personally interested in. Because it was the first time I did this type of video, I have taken news that are not exactly from the last week. But I wanted to talk about them. If I have mentioned a game in this video, doesn't mean that I will talk about the exact same games in the next one. Honestly, I will just cover the most interesting news. But if you also want me to cover some news about a game you are actually playing, just let me know in the comments so I can try to check it out. And that's it for today's video, I hope that I have helped you. Thank you so much for watching, leave a comment, drop a like and consider subscribing if you want to see more videos of news in the future in my channel and see you in the next video. Ciao!